I'm totally out of my element down here where I used to live and grew up. Now, like I say, this is probably the most dangerous place in Canada. Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. I am here in my hometown where I was born and raised, Surrey, BC. And I've got an idea. I want to try to do a stealth camp. But I'm going to show you the hospital I was born in and the spot where the acreage I grew up on is. I don't know if I like this idea, but this used to be a bad hotel. Bad, bad. I don't know, man. I'm totally out of my element down here where I used to live and grew up. It's changed. But I left when I was 19. But I'm telling you. Oh, I'm right at the corner at the hospital I was born in, 1963. I found a little section of bush here, but they're getting ready obviously to put more high rises and more condominiums and whatever in this section of bush. I've been driving around and uh, a lot of the areas that used to be just bush are just gone. Uh, there's just very little sections of bush, but I will find one, trust me, to spend the night. But you know, like here in Surrey, uh, it's the highest crime rate in Canada in Surrey. Um, you know, nothing to be proud of. I left here when I was 19, but uh, nowadays, you know, highest crime rate in Canada. Every week, there's several shootings. So I might want to find a spot where there's thick blackberries and I can get in and find a section to string the hammock where it's a deterrent because there's enough homeless people in the area now that some of these sections of bush that I might get into, there could be people camping in there as well. So, you know, I have to be careful. Like I say, I'm out of my element coming back to where I was born and raised. Everything's changed so much. The crime rate has gone through the roof. And people are uh, actually, you know, like the homeless and this and that, are staying in sections of these little parts of the, the city now. So um, I'm going to show you some of that. I'm going to take you over now and show you where I grew up. And it used to be acreages, five acre parcels, one after the other. There used to be bear, deer. Uh, I used to catch salmon in the creek. I'm going to show you where the creek used to be. And uh, where I grew up now is just nothing but a concrete jungle. This is where our, the old house used to be. And uh, surprisingly enough, this section of bush is basically similar. There's a big building behind me, you can see. That big building is where our house used to be. The neighbors on both sides, the houses are still there, the old houses from when I grew up. There's a brown house over here. You can see in the background that brown house. That is the same house as when I grew up, right here. And on the other side over there, the other house is the same as well. So, so except for the house I grew up in, both the neighbors' houses are the same. I see some of the trees that we used to, that big cottonwood in the background, behind the big building, the big cottonwood, we used to, we had a tree fort about 40 feet up in it, a tree fort that we built. And, uh, and the creek, I just drove over the creek, it's still quite wooded through there, so maybe that'll be a spot for me to do this stealth camp 
right on the creek where I used to catch salmon as a kid. That would be just awesome. Okay, so I'm down at the creek. And as uh, hard as it is to believe, with all the construction in the area, the creek is very similar. I probably sat on this same rock as a kid. Uh, story time for you. Uh, when I was 13, I ran away and I built a lean-to on this creek. And what I did is I was catching little minnows and drying them <clears throat> on a hot rock in the sun. And that's what I was eating. Uh, of course, I got discovered uh, after a day or so. Um, I was only 13, had to go back home. This is deja vu for me. 50 some years later, I used to ca <laughs> come down here and collect salmon berries and uh, make horsetail tea. I see the horsetail, I see the salmon berries, and there's still little minnows in the creek. So I think this is where I'd like to do the stealth camp this is awesome. This will, I'll never get this opportunity again in my lifetime. Deja vu. I'm going to go up here, the creek a little bit, and where the big cottonwood was that I showed you, and see if there's any remnants of our old tree fort that we built as teenagers. It'd be really something if there was still some boards or something left to the tree fort. Right on. So in this little pool here, I can see the little minnows, like the ones that I was drying on the rock here. And I remember this bank and this particular spot. And uh, this little creek, like I say in the fall, about September, used to be full of big salmon. They would come up the Fraser up into this creek. And I imagine they still do because these are probably uh, little salmon minnows. Uh, this is awesome. I used to gold pan on this creek too and find colors of gold. There's actually gold in this creek too. I, I'm so happy that this particular section of bush is kind of untouched. Um, all around us, every section of bush, there's high rises, I'm going to show you that. Big condos and apartments going up. But this section I grew up on is uh, still relatively intact. That's unbelievable. This uh, Big old branch is still across the creek. This is where I used to cross as a kid. Unbelievable. Still thick in here like it used to be. Blackberries over there. Now you can hear a lot of noise around us because like I say, um, it's built up so much except for this section I grew up on and in the back and down through here, it's pretty developed around us. So you hear lawnmowers, traffic, planes, this hollow stump here. I used to come and sit here right by this big stump. Oh, I'm so glad some of this stuff's still here. The tree fort used to be in that big tree in the back, but I don't see it there anymore. So here we're two blocks away, and this is what is all around. This is how most of the blocks look now. I'll just go in the uh, Dollarama, 
see if I can find a couple of things for my overnight stealth camp. I uh, just stayed here at my buddy Jim's last night. He's gonna give me a ride to the spot, me and Finn. Just uh, tied to the big tree last night. And to the 1950 tractor. And there's the old Chev. Camping Finn. My old stomping ground. Hey Finn, we're go we're going to the acreage. Get in the back here. Here. Oh. Come. <whistles> Finn. Finley. No, we're not going in that truck. Okay, Jim. Alrighty, buddy. I got my stuff. I'll give night. you a call in the morning. Have a good night. Alright. Should be good. good. Yeah, alright. Have a good night. It's gonna be great on the old acreage. Well, the old creek. Nobody owns the creek. It's a bit of work packing the gear up the creek here. The bush is so thick along here. And uh, it's not easy going with my hammock and supplies. And Finn, he's confused. He's not, he's not used to this kind of bush. He probably wonders what's going on in the blackberries and but man the places that i used to hang out as a kid and i'm right back there i said 50 some years later but it's 40 some years later but a lot of blackberries grabbing everything hopefully it's not destroying my hammock I'm just kind of talking low because I just I just don't want people knowing I'm down here. I mean, even though it's fine to be on the creek here, I just don't want people discovering me. And uh, somebody was saying that these little patches of bush throughout Surrey and Langley, that there's up to uh, several hundred people, homeless people living in the bushes, like any patches like this. I haven't seen anybody here but I'm gonna be the guy here. I'm gonna have to get up pretty high. Oh boy. It's a little difficult. These uh, bushes, blackberries everywhere. Like, it's grown in a lot since I was young. I mean, used to be able to walk this creek quite easily, but it's a bit of a chore now, it is. But I think I'll be good here. Some of these areas you'd never get to. But hey, that's gonna keep like uh, other people out when there's so many blackberries too. So as far as the safety situation, like I say, this is, you know, probably the most dangerous place in Canada to do this kind of thing nowadays. You know, it was bad when I was a kid, but now, I mean, I was even warned by a couple of people today. Oh, you're going to do that? Well, you know, you better watch yourself. There's other homeless people out there, and I guess there's a real problem with, you know, homeless in the lower mainland and shootings and stabbings and, you know, people fighting over maybe even little patches of bush like this. I don't know. But I got Finn. He's a pretty good protector, and I got all these blackberries that should keep the intruders out from this side and that side so finn will let me know he will some of the same trees same stumps same creek it's just boy i never thought i'd ever see the day that i got back and there was still this little section of bush where i grew up they plan on developing i'm sure eventually but for now this is history this is history in the making. 
return all this time later and see the same spot. <laughs> I'm uh, just sitting here reminiscing and uh, you know I thought of something. When I was like 13, 14 growing up in this area my mom gave me this eight millimeter camera and it was a wind-up camera. You had to wind it up. It had a handle, pull the trigger and I used to do videos of me doing bushcraft and survival and catching fish and the salmon runs and I have a box a shoe box of these old eight millimeter uh, videos that I did in the early 70s now I don't know it's probably hard to find an eight millimeter projector to watch these and hopefully they're still okay but I haven't thought about this till now and uh, I have to see if I can restore that because I'm sure that you'd be interested in these videos if there's a way of restoring them putting them on a chip so leave a comment below if you maybe know how that I can go about uh, salvaging these old videos that I had from the early 70s uh, then I went to like a super 8 which was a bit different camera that actually had sound uh, the original uh, just plain eight millimeter it didn't have sound but I think it had color I got to find a way to uh, try to get these videos that I did as a kid right in this bush um, saved salvaged and put onto something now I hear the sirens going something's happened somewhere probably but not here but anyways Leave a comment below if you know how maybe I can recover all this old footage from the 70s. Right on. Good morning. Well, that was very interesting. I'm sure glad I did this. Um, in the night, I couldn't get it on film. It was dark out, but Finn went after something, but he's tied up. A raccoon was coming down the creek, and they were face to face, and... Uh, so I had to get a hold of him but uh, that's what I remember here too the first traps that I used to make to catch raccoons and uh, the scary part was letting them go uh, they get pretty aggressive once you catch them in a live trap and uh, I used to do that as a kid I'd always let them go but uh, cool well we'll get up and uh, and I'll tell you a little more about the stuff I used to do right here on the creek This was a great experience being back where I grew up practicing survival skills. First bow drill I started here at 13. The live traps I used to make and uh, after reading the survival books this is where I practiced my survival skills right here near this creek. This is uh, they get big and they get hollow stems and we used to shoot them as kids with a slingshot and they would fall over and it was just a lot of fun. Uh, this is called policeman's helmet or uh, Himalayan balsam. It doesn't have edible properties as far as I know, but uh, the thing that's neat about them is when they get the uh, flowers and the seed pods in the fall, September, October, and you touch the plant and it shoots the seeds like about 10 feet. It's really neat. So, another plant to show you. And uh, I'm going to pack up and head out of here. But what an awesome time being back where I first studied survival and bushcraft. Well, I'm uh, back at my campsite at home here. And uh, 
you know, something I thought about, which might leave some people a little curious and interested why I bought the candle and the can of the soup. And uh, basically that was to heat the can, but I never, never got hungry and ate the soup. So I'll just show you basically an easy way to heat up soup and uh, finish the video off that way. Because, uh, you know, <laughs> you see me buying these things in the store and then nothing happens with the items. So, I mean, I'll do this in another video as well, but I'll show you how this works. It's pretty, uh, pretty efficient. So then you just hang your, uh, your can of soup about two inches from the bottom. And you got to watch that you don't <clears throat> get the can so hot it blows up because I've had them blow up on me too. And I don't take the lid off because it's like a can opener, or can opener. It's like a can or canner, a pressure cooker. So, you know, once in a while you shake it and uh, it actually heats up fairly, fairly quickly. I just neglected to show you that little... That was the reason I bought the candle and the soup. But anyway, and uh, the paracord won't uh, melt. If you can figure out another way, it doesn't take very long with a candle to heat up a can of soup. Right on, I'm gonna do that on another video. So thank you, all you subscribers and viewers in general. I hope you enjoyed this experience and uh, I really appreciate all of you. So uh, till the next one, uh, remember, it's fire season. Watch your fires, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.